show is going to be a little bit different because we're bringing uh, one of the guests in is going to co-host with us right now. We want to welcome David Lee Frost is with us. How you doing, David? I'm doing good, Richie. How you doing? I'm doing well, buddy. All right. And David brought a guest, too. We'll get to that later. Yes, I did. Yeah. He brought a very special guest today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, two, but only one of them is going to be on air. Oh, uh, Patty. Oh, Patty's here, too. Uh, That's Patty's right. Here. Actually, you brought three because Actually, you, yeah. because you were going to bring Tommy Shannon back to the uh, KB right. Airways. Right. But, unfortunately, he can't make it to Buffalo. He's coming in tomorrow, I guess, So, but we're going to be calling him. So he's going to be on the radio. All right, yeah. So in Tommy's, that's Buffalo history right there. Right. There's there's so much to talk about about him. There is. So who do you have with you? I have my father, Lee Frost, on the air with us today. Hey, hi, everybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. Hey. <laughs> and Lee is a story and a half, too. I mean, on top of being... Lee is a story. The, he is definitely a story. The father of David Lee. Yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the best stories that you ever told me is he's he's kind of the reason that you got it turned on to music. Absolutely. And it was the Ed Sullivan appearance of the Beatles, which That's is right. the, like the catalyst for a lot of guys. That's right. Yep. It was that Ed yep. Sullivan appearance. I remember reading uh, St. Billy Sheehan watched it, and that's what turned him on, too. It seems like everybody. Yeah, every every single guy, you know, that's, that was born in that era, that one day yep. really just changed the history of popular music. I remember I was uh, eight years old, and, uh, you know... Dad came home and he says, you know, oh, come, you're going to watch Ed Sullivan show tonight and the Beatles. And that way I knew who they were because of, you know, I used to hang out at the radio station at KB and the TV station. And I knew the disc jockeys when I was a kid. I was like a pain in the neck kid, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, they could, you know, they let me watch in the studio when they were on air and stuff. It was pretty cool. So I knew who the Beatles were, but that was the first time I saw them. And the reason why you were able to do all this is because your father, Lee, right. along with Tommy, also worked for KB. Yep. He but worked he worked in the TV division of it. Right. That's right. So you were able to hang out and be that pain in the butt kid. Yeah. Yeah. He used to take me to work, and he used to work the overnight shifts or at the telethons when they used to have 24 hours nonstop. And I used to have to stay up all night. You know, I thought it was a big deal when you're, you know, 10, 12 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Had to stay up. up. Yeah. And I had full, I, it was, <laughs> I, I had full, uh, full access to the... Uh, the KB uh, television studios. I could go in the control room. I could go in, uh, you know, the editing room. I could go in the lounge. I go right on the studio floor. You know, red light. That didn't mean nothing. I walked it right in. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so Lee, yes. um, you worked at KB, and you you were like a jack of all trades. Well, I, I started as a photographer, and uh, working there with. In in those days, they were uh, nobody knew what they were doing really because it was a new a new medium. So uh, we did everything, and uh, then I became a cameraman, a floor director, uh, you name it. I even swept the floor. When uh, when did you re- actually retire? Oh, eighty five. Eighty five. So things had to be really different from when you started. Oh, yeah, we had no. Uh, Every, all the special effects were made by hand, you mm-hmm. know, black cards and front of lenses and things like that. <clears throat> so um, it was a learning experience, and it was a great place to work. I enjoyed everything. I met thousands of people. The best part is I go to work and I meet 20 people, new people I never knew, mm-hmm. some very uh, important people. Uh, in my t- time, I've met all the governors. I met three presidents. Uh, uh, I just can't think of them all. Were shows mainly done live in the beginning? Yeah, it was so all live. that was like yeah. a recipe for I disaster. Think we were I thought. the last TV station to get videotape. Really? And that was because at that time it was owned by uh, Capital Cities, and uh, they had just finished the Eichmann trial in Europe, and Capital Cities was. I, as I understand, was um, hired to do the the Eichmann trial exclusively. So when that ended, they were they were left with all these video cameras and tape machines and all. So they peddled them around to the different stations that they owned at the time. Oh no, kidding! Yeah. Were you, okay, when did you start working for? KB. Around 58. 58. So that was the time when KB, the, were you around for the big July 4th uh, changeover when KB went to the rock and roll format? Because if you go to buffalobroadcasters.com, yeah. which is a great site, uh, absolutely fantastic site, yeah. and it really chronicles the history yeah. of Buffalo broadcasters and music, um, <clears throat> you can read an article there of, of when KB became the rock and roll station and became the, a really important station in the country. It is. Yeah, they, it, I can't remember all these jocks but we had some of the best jocks in the world uh 
And they started at KB, and uh, they went out to greater heights, of course, but uh, some, like Dick Bianchi, you know, th that's one name comes back. Right, right, right. Russ Syracuse, and uh, these are the old timers. Uh, I can't think of any more. Hound Dog Lorenz was on. Okay. Oh, yeah, Hound Dog yeah. was there. Yeah, yeah. That, was, and that was right at the beginning. Shane, brother Shane. Yeah. Shane. Was Shane on KB? Yes. Yeah. KB yeah, but right. that was later, right? That was absolutely later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, if, if I was reading this great article, though, that was talking about uh, uh, Beyondy and, and, and several other folks that were brought into town from places like Denver and everything yeah. else for this big changeover that happened at KB uh, to become, you know, rock and roll, top 30 rock and roll. And it was going to happen on the, the 4th of July, I believe, 1958 is when it happened. And then, you know, the rest is history. It was, you know, it's funny how many musicians you talk to today that were from New York City that got the signal in New, New Jersey, in New York. And, talk, I mean, talking about the signal, my my brother was in the Marine Corps, and he actually got KB on in the Mediterranean Sea on an aircraft carrier. Really? Yeah. That's very impressive. Holy cow. 50,000 watts goes a long yeah. way. Well, it was skip. a skip thing. Yeah. It was yeah, a yeah. skip. Yeah. But uh, you could drive to Florida and listen to KB all the way. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I get You know, you can still, it's still it's still a 50,000 watt station and it's still a monster. You, you, uh, you did Dialing for Dollars with a couple other local yeah. guys. Johnny and Jimmy were on there. Yeah, I did. Actually, I did the very first Dialing for Dollars. Really? <laughs> and I believe the last, I think. Um, and I did first Rocket Ship. I remember that. Rocket Ship 7. We were taping him in the evening. Dave was there, and we taped it to play back in the morning. Because, first of all, there was no programming in the morning. Everything, we go to work at 3 and go to midnight, go to midnight at night. Yeah. And, uh, and it had to be huge for you, though. That, I mean, it had to be yeah. huge. You were a kid. How old? You were young then, too, right? Yeah. Oh, geez, yeah. Yeah. We used to, I used to go there and, you know. And Rocket Ship 7, for everyone out there that's too young to, to know this, in the morning, it was the morning kid show that you kind of watched show ever. Yeah. when you were getting ready for school or right. or if you were, you know, yeah. earlier than school age, you, you, you watched it every morning. So that had to be, like, monumental. It was fun. Because then, like, you know, after the after they were done with the taping, you know, I'd, you know, go to the set, you know, and I'd, like, want to play with the dials and stuff, but they were all fake, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was just, you know, it's just TV yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. scenery, you know, the set, you know? I thought, I thought, oh, man, this is cool, you know? Who was that? Was that Tom Tom Jones? David, that, no, yeah. Dave Thomas. Dave, Dave, Dave Thomas. Thomas, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But then, oh, it was Commander Tom. That yeah, Commander was. Tom was Tom Jones, that's, yes. that, that's right, that's right. And your father actually was promo the robot a couple of times well i did fit in one once or twice when during a snowstorm nobody got it he came in no oh, okay okay uh, so i mean yes i was in the can but uh it wasn't a routine either way you were still promo for a I, day yeah, yeah one day. Come on. <laughs> were you were you in the studio david when he I, did that I probably was yeah yeah that had to be awesome and it was neat because uh, going through like you know grammar school you know dude you have a field trip from school and uh, I would always be the one, you know, to arrange uh, for the class to go oh, to, to come see the studio. TV, the studio, and we'd spend the whole day there, you know. And it was like every year, it was like, can you get, the, can you get your dad to, you know, do the field trip again, you know? I remember you telling me a story. That, uh, where were the studios then? Main Street? Main Street. 14, 20. So, and, and the TV studio and the radio studio were right next to each other, you said? Yes. Yeah, because yeah. David told me that he used to, he used to just meander from building to yeah. building, so he would, he would see. Well, they all knew him. Yeah, yeah, they knew it was David. Yeah, these kids here again, you know, let them in, you know. Yeah, so you'd be secretary, I'd walk right by, hey, where are you going? Ah, I'm all right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so you'd go sit in with with, with these yeah. legendary jocks yeah. or sit in and watch right. tapings of TV shows or whatever. You kind of had I remember kind of I was, Fred Clustine was working on there. Yeah. I went into the studio and he had this these leather, brown leather pants on. I think it was the first time I saw leather pants in this, like, really wild colored shirt, you know. It was in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. thinking, Man, is that cool, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was it. And you've seen Shane. I think Shane yeah. actually had yep. that same image. Yep, he did. Too. Yep. Yeah, this is, well, this is all fantastic stuff. We're going to come outside uh, the commercial break and talk a little bit more of the history of KB. And we're going to have Tommy Shannon on as a guest. So stick around, folks. You heard it on the X.